so after completion of empirical formulas in this video we will start the analytical formulas for the measurement of evaporation so give the heading analytical formulas analytical formulas for evaporation measurement so what is the difference between analytical formulas and empirical formulas empirical formulas don't have a mathematical derivation okay so if you just look in these formulas so the formula which you are seeing here that is mayer's formula and this fitzgerald's formula there is no proof for this okay they are derived based on what they are derived based on the practical or we can say on field experimentations so there is no proof for this however now the formulas that or the formulas that have some mathematical proof that is they can be derived such formulas are called as analytical formulas so in this analytical formulas the first one that we are going to study is called as water budget method water budget method so in the initial classes as we have already seen that the input minus loss will be equal to change in storage okay that is input minus output in a particular reservoir will be equal to change in storage of the reservoir so if you just go back to the previous slides we'll be able to see that so just a minute okay so so this is the first one so in the initial lectures only we have seen what is the meaning of water budget so in the water budget we have seen that it is based on the continuity equation and input minus outflow or we can say inflow minus outflow will be equal to change in storage now what is the input to a particular catchment so the input is the precipitation what is the output output are all the losses so we have seen the losses like evaporation interception evapotranspiration so these are all the losses and also infiltration so if you just subtract this all then we will get the change in storage we have also seen the example of a reservoir in which the level of reservoir initially was s1 due to evaporation what has happened the water has been evaporated here so there is some decrease in level so this change in volume of the reservoir from the initial level to the final level it is called as change in storage that is the delta s value s1 minus s2 okay now what is the input here the input is only precipitation rest all are the rest all are the losses here so the same things are expressed here in the water budget equation so by using this water budget equation if we know all the other values except evaporation then we can find out the value of evaporation by using this analytical method so this is the basic logic of this nothing you have to just write down the water budget equation and then get the value of evaporation so the most important point from this water budget equation is it is based in based on continuity equation it is based on continuity equation it is based on continuity equation okay and the law which is used here is it is based on law of conservation of mass law of conservation of mass so if we just write this then we can write this equation as so one by one we'll write it so first we'll write the precipitation okay so this is precipitation p then what are the inflow then the inflow will be the surface inflow then the ground water inflow so this both will be the coming in inflows okay so that will come in surface inflow and ground water inflow so inflow and ground water so vig so this will be the input that is we can just write it p plus inflow precipitation plus inflow and from this if we subtract all the losses so what are the various losses here all the outflows so first will be the surface outflow 
so surface outflow then ground water outflow so these are the losses then the other major losses will be evaporation loss and then transpiration loss so let's assume that these are all the losses that are taking place so this is representing the outflow so inflow minus outflow this is equal to change in storage so same thing here can be written as delta s that is change in storage of lake or reservoir so this is the basic equation here and this is continuity equation now in this case if we know all the other parameters then we can find out the value of then we can find out the value of el okay if we substitute substitute everything in this equation then we can find out the value of el so just we'll write it down the meaning of all the terms here so p stands for daily precipitation daily precipitation then vis stands for daily surface inflow daily surface inflow then next is vi g that is daily ground water inflow okay similarly this vo and vg is the daily outflow surface outflow and ground water outflow then this el stands for el stands for daily evaporation daily lake evaporation and tl stands for daily transpiration daily transpiration loss so these are all the terms which are used in this formula so generally in the question you will be given certain inflows certain outflows and change in the storage so you have to just add whatever the inflows are there and subtracts all the outflow is there and this in uh, our evaporation loss will will be coming in the outflow just remember that and then by solving this equation you will get the value of evaporation loss that is daily evaporation loss so this is the first method that is water budget method coming to the second method so this is called as energy balance method energy balance method so we'll quickly draw here one lake okay so this is the lake or you can say a reservoir so there is certain water which is present inside okay so this is the water level now so due to sun there is certain energy so as the method name of the method is energy method energy balance method so we have to balance all the energy that is coming so first the energy will be coming that is insulation that we say it okay so this waves will come this energy will be getting absorbed with the water so this we are representing by r so r is called as insulation or we can call it as incoming solar radiation incoming solar radiation in short insulation now there is a certain energy which is getting lost in evaporation that is he okay that is energy used in evaporation then there will be certain energy which will be lost to the atmosphere 
so this is energy lost to the atmosphere and certain energy will be absorbed by the ground so that is energy absorbed by the ground so we'll just name it hg so these are the total four energies which we have considered while while calculating or while analyzing the lake by energy balance method so r is the total energy which is coming to the lake then there is certain amount of energy which is used in evaporation certain energy is lost in the atmosphere and certain energy is lost in the ground okay so we will write now this uh, what is the meaning of h a h e and h g so first we will write h a so h a is the heat loss heat loss to atmosphere heat loss to atmosphere then h e energy used in energy used in evaporation energy used in evaporation then hg is energy lost energy lost in ground okay so now this method energy balance method it is based on law of conservation of energy law of conservation of energy that means energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can just be transformed from one form to another form so as total energy is constant we can write it as energy which is coming inside that is inflow of energy minus outflow of energy this is equal to zero so substituting the values here the inflow is r okay so this r energy is coming to the system the rest all energies are getting lost here so minus h a minus h e minus h g this is equal to zero correct so solving this we can get r is is equal to h a plus h e plus h g so this is the first equation that we have got okay now this h e that is energy used in evaporation can be written as so this h e can be written as rho w into l into e l now what is this rho w so this rho w is mass density of water mass density of water what is the value of mass density of water 1000 kg per meter cube then l stands for latent heat of evaporation latent heat of evaporation so this value will be given in the question and el stands for a rate of evaporation okay so now this formula which i have written it here he this you substitute here in this first equation so once we substitute it here so we'll just write down this r is equal to ha plus instead of he we will write rho w into l into el plus hg so now we will write the equation in form of el so we have to find out el here so we'll write the equation in the form of el so rest all the terms you uh, move it to the left hand side so it will be el it is equal to in numerator it will be r minus ha minus hg so r in bracket h a plus h g correct divided by so these two are in product rho w into l so this will go into division so rho w into l 
so as compared to this r this h a and h g are very small so this is the main equation if h a and h g not given if h a and h g not given then the el it is equal to el it is equal to r by rho w into l r by rho w into l where r is the incoming solar radiation rho w is the density of water and l is the latent heat of evaporation so this is the formula or analytical formula by using the energy balance method to find out the rate of evaporation so here there is one note that you have to write so note because this was asked once in an is exam so write down bowen's ratio bowen's ratio so bowen's ratio is h a divided by h e so this is called as bowen's ratio the ratio of heat lost to the atmosphere to the energy used in evaporation so if you just take the ratio of this you will get the bowen's ratio okay so this is all the concepts which will be required from the energy balance method the units will be given in the examination because this is an analytical methods so there will be no issue with the units so these are the two methods that we have discussed first is the water budget method and second is the energy balance method two to three points are there which are very very important in this equation on which many times questions are asked i am just highlighting this the first point is this water budget equation it is based on continuity equation and it is based on law of conservation of what law of conservation of mass whereas the energy balance method it is based on law of conservation of energy so remember this point okay and rest the derivation i have given it to you here so you can just remember this and this bowen's ratio is also important so this is all the points which are important from the evaporation measurements by using analytical methods with this now we have completed the evaporation measurements all the three methods we have seen now for the measurement of the evaporation we have seen the first one that is evaporimeters so in case of rain gauge stations we have seen that world meteorological organization that is wmo has given certain guidelines for area wise how many rain gauges to, should be present okay so similarly there is certain recommendations which are given by the which are given by the world meteorological organization for the evaporimeter or evaporation stations so recommendations recommendations by world meteorological organization for evaporation stations evaporation stations like rain gauge stations there are evaporation stations also and what is present at evaporation stations that pan evaporation which we have seen the different types of pans so that is present at these locations so it has been given based on the zonal one that is for arid zones arid zones there should be there should be minimum one minimum one for every for every 30000 kilometer square for the arid zones for the humid temperate humid temperate climates so there should be minimum one station for every 50000 kilometer square and then for the cold region for the cold regions there should be minimum one 
मिनिमम वन फॉर एवरी वन लैक किलोमीटर स्क्वेर सो दीज आर द रिकमेंडेशन दैट आर गिवन बाय द वर्ल्ड मेट्रोलॉजिकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉर द इवापोरेशन स्टेशन सो दैट्स इट विद दिस वीडियो नाउ इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास वील बी सींग द इवापोर ट्रांसपीरेशन